Hi, Assalamualaikum guys. We meet again for this week. This week, I would like to introduce you still in the chapter 5 which is the function but today is the part 2. So, in the last week, uh, I have been uh, teach you about the function part 1. So, uh, this is the continuous uh, from last week topic. So, next. So, of course, guys, learning outcome. Uh, what you got after you done this topic. First, uh, you should be able to learn about standard or we call it as the predefined function and discover how to use them in the program. So, this objective, uh, I hope that you can achieve it because this uh, predefined function, I have been told you last week. Okay, so today I would like to uh, introduce you about the user-defined function. Okay, so today is all about the user-defined function. Uh, what does it mean about the value written in function including actual and formal parameter okay so this is the learning outcome so next so next is before i go further to today topics okay so i would like to recap back about the user defined function that you have been learned last week so remember guys when we talk about the function what does it mean so the definition of function can efficiently break down large program into smaller one as they can divide problem into sub problem or we call it as the modules so remember the other name of the function we call we can call it as the module so using function you can divide each function based on their specific task for example you want to solve problem to find the maximum of three number before I introduce the function, you will put all the tasks to find the three maximum number you will put inside the integer main. So, all the process integer main will execute it. But after I introduce the function, you need to put that, uh, that problem into one function. So, we can create one function to solve that problem. So, uh, that function will focus on how to find maximum of three number only. Okay, so remember when we talk about the function, uh, the function will focus on their own specific task. Okay, in order to create the user defined function, guys, a programmer must satisfy uh, three requirements, or we call it as the element in the function i hope that you still remember what is the three requirement or element that we need to use before we create our user defined function remember user defined function is you you yang create function ini or we call it as the programmer that want to do one program so first so first requirement that you need to put before you create the function first you need the function prototype okay this we call it as the function prototype so what does it mean the, about the function prototype the other name of the function prototype is uh, we call it as the function declaration okay next element we need to put the function call if you don't call the function so how did the integer main know if you don't call the function how did the integer main know what kind of function that you need to solve that problem so function call is very important for you to create a user defined function and the last one is the function definition function definition what does it mean function definition is the function itself the body of function that contain all the specific tasks that you want use it to solve the programming problem okay so remember okay so next User defined function in C are classified into two category of functions. So remember, we have a two category of function. First, we have the value written in function, and the second one is the void function. So what does it mean about the both of these category? So next, I will tell you more about each of the category of user defined function. So next, I would like to introduce you what does it mean about the value returning function. Okay. So, value returning function. Remember, value returning function is the function that have a return type. That means, this kind of function, this category of function will return something. Okay, this will return 
something to me. What is the something? Is it the ver value? So this function will return a value of the specific data type using the return statement. Remember, value returning function it will consist of the return statement. So using the return statement, uh, we can return something or we can return a value to the integer main. So a function which type is so this value returning function we can uh, declare it as the data type integer or char double or float okay and must return value to the function hot a function can only return one value at a time so this is very important when we talk about the value returning function it can return only one value at a time okay so remember dia hanya boleh return satu value dalam satu masa sahaja Jangan nanti saya tengok tiba-tiba eh function tu boleh return more than one value. Dia menggunakan return statement. Okay remember if you use a return statement to return something to the integer main it can only return only one value at a time. So miss if uh, if the question asks you to return more than one value okay how we can solve that. So there is a way how to return more than one value at the integer main. So, uh, next week, I will tell you more about that. Okay, so the syntax to return a value, so this one. This is the syntax, the very important syntax that represent the um, function is the value returning category. Okay, based on this syntax. So, remember, how do you know that function is value returning or void function so value returning function if you can see inside the function definition it consists of the written expression that means that function is under category of value returning function and the other more is if you can see the function declare clear as the integer or char or double or float so that means that is the category of the value returning function so it can uh, it says that an expression can be in the form of value that match with their type of identity. Yes. In each category of function, even though that is the value returning of void function, they need to have the three elements, which is uh, as I mentioned before, we need to have the value uh, function prototype, function call, and we need to have the function definition. Okay. Tak kisahlah dia value returning function ke void function Dia kena ada tiga benda tu wajib So next I want to uh, tell you what does it mean about the function prototype So function prototype declares a certain information pertaining to the function So declare what function does and what the parameter are So this function prototype is like a variable declaration the function of the prototype ni sama dengan variable declaration which is we need to declare first before we want to use it inside the program. So that's mean about the function prototype. Declaration of the function. So the other name of the function prototype is declaration of function. Okay, so we need to declare what function does and what the parameters are. A function must be declared before it is called. So remember, this is very important. You need to declare first before you want to call it. Same with the variable. You need to declare first before you can use it. So same right. Same with the variable declaration. So remember, a function prototype has the three parts. First, we have the return type. So return type is the data type of that function. Whether we want to declare it as the integer, float, double, char or char. Char star. So char star is for the uh, char that have the size. Okay, this is how we declare function if the function use the uh, char that have the size. Next, uh, next part, uh, of course, it's name. So you need to have the name identifier. So remember, when we talk about the identifier, identifier must represent what you want to solve. Okay, same with the uh, variable. The identifier of variable is what you want to store inside the memory. So for this function, you need to name it as the 
what the function do what the stuff that function do so name so remember to name the function okay you need to remember back the rule of the identifier next it's parameter so variable within the function so this is the parameter usually we use the parameter to to send the value from main into the function okay so next this is how the function prototype looks like this is the syntax of the function prototype as you can see first you need to have the written type so data type function name and you need to parameter list so this one for the function prototype parameter list remember only the data type for the variable are required in the parameter list remember you need to put only the data type not all the full variable if you want to send something into the function if you want to send integer num okay so this you declare it as the integer num however in function prototype you just put this data type only this variable data type on only okay remember so this statement is placed after hashtag include io stream and other header if you have the predefined function after you declare all the predefined function and after you declare using namespace std after that you need to put the function prototype so function prototype must be put before the function main okay before you declare integer main okay so this is how the function prototypes looks like okay next prototype must match function definition okay for example if we have the function definition if we have the function we declare it as the double max double x double y double z so this is we call it as the parameter okay ini adalah function dia eh ini function ini function prototype so prototype must match function definition means that whatever you write in here you need to write it back at the function proto type okay as you can see if you declare your function definition as a double max so in function prototype also you need to follow it okay if you have uh, if you have the parameter if you have the three number of parameter inside the function definition so function prototype also have the three parameter however remember back okay remember back this one this one okay only the data type for the variable are required in the parameter list so as you can see in the function definition it's declared as a double x double y double z for the parameter however for the for the parameter inside the prototype you just need to put the data type only so this is the meaning okay okay so this is the meaning of that notes before okay we just put the data type only okay miss if i put uh if i declare it as integer so remember prototype must match function definition so you need to put the integer also in here okay whatever you write at the header of the function definition you need to write it back inside the function prototype this is how we declare our function so after you uh, write double max you have the parameter you need to and it with the semicolon so this is the syntax for the function prototype so this is uh, an example of the function prototype for example we have the integer find side integer integer when we see this function declaration that means the, uh, this function declare the function find sum so we know that this the the task of this function is for the find sum for the two number after you see this function prototype the function declaration you know that uh, this function expect to receive two integer argument from where from the integer main so if you see this function declare as the data type integer so you know that that function will return value integer to the integer main okay uh, for this one the other example of the function prototype under category of value returning function 
So this is how we do the declaration of the function. So float uh, swap. This is the name of the function, and this function uh, will receive one, two, three, four, four value from the four value from the main. So as you can see in here, in parameter we can receive any kind of data type. Tak kisah lah kalau integer, integer lah Based on what data What you want to receive from integer main Okay as you can see It says that declare that the function swap Require four argument consisting of two floating point Argument, two floating point One integer argument And one character argument in this order And that it will return a floating point value How did we know that what kind of data type that this function will return is based on this data type. Okay, so data type dia float. So that's mean we know that this function will return a uh, floating value. So next is the second element that we need to put inside our function. So next is the function definition. Okay, what does it mean about the function definition? Function definition is to define what the function does. Or the, de or the description or definition definition of what each function is to do. So, in function definition, is the place where we put the specific task based on the problem. Okay? As I mentioned before, if we want to solve a problem on how to find the three maximum number, so the task to solve the problem, we need to put inside the function definition. So, is it in our program we can have more than one function? Of course, we can have many function in our program. It based on what kind of programming problem that we want to solve. Okay, so as you can see in here, it says that comprises the sequence of statement that will be executed each time the function is invoked. A function definition cannot be called unless the function is Declare. So remember, first we need to declare our function. Next, we need to put the function definition. Okay, integer main can't call it this function definition if you forgot to declare it first. When we talk about the declare, mean that's mean you need to write the function prototype. So next, the function prototype and the function definition must agree exactly on the written type, the name and the parameter. As I mentioned before, what you write inside the function definition, you need to write it back the same, the same written type, the same name, the same parameter at the function prototype. So that is mean about this point. Okay, you need to exactly, maksudnya, Apa yang awak tulis dekat kepala function definition ni Itu yang awak salin balik dekat function prototype So, the only difference between the function prototype and the function header is a semi colon As you can see before in here Okay So, this is the differentiate between the function prototype and function definition Okay the differentiate between function prototype and function definition is only this one. The the data type, the name, the parameter is same. However, the the difference between both of these is this one. For function prototype, you must end it with the semicolon. However, for the function definition, you you no need to put the semicolon. Okay, remember this is the difference between both of. Okay, okay. The the function definition consists of the function header and its Body means that function definition have the header and its body is body contain all the statement that you need to solve the problem or we call it as the task. Okay, the task to solve the problem. Okay, the header is exactly like the function prototype, misty sama. Okay, except that is contain no terminating semicolon. Ni different dia. Okay. The header mesti sama Okay, apa yang you tulis dekat kepala function Itu yang awak copy dekat Function prototype Okay, ada orang tanya saya, Miss Kalau saya buat function definition Later baru saya buat function prototype Is it okay? Okay, tak ada masalah Okay, you tinggalkan after you buat uh, After you write using Nespec STD If you not sure What kind of function that you need to write inside Your uh, program So, 
you can live if blind first. Okay, tinggalkan kosong dahulu kat bahagian tu. Better you can fill it based on the function definition that you have done right inside your program. So, this is how we uh, write our function definition. So, first you need to have the written type. Okay, if the question asks you to return something to the main, that means that function definition is under category of the value returning function. If the value returning function, you should have the return type. What kind of return type means? It can be anything, any any data type. It can be the integer, it can be the double, float, chart. Later, I will tell you how we can know the data type of this function definition. Uh, after you write the return type, the second thing that you need to write is the function name. So remember, function name must be represent what kind of specific task that function will solve. Okay, jangan you pergi letak function name x, y, z, no. Okay, ataupun kalau function tu uh, untuk kira summation of two number, you need to name it as the find sum. Nama tu melambangkan apa yang dia buat. Okay, followed by the parameter list. Parameter list ni based on the what kind of data that this function need. For example, if this function want to find the three maximum number, okay, dia nak cari maximum number. Untuk tiga nombor. So, apa data yang diperlukan daripada main? Sebab main yang akan minta data itu betul tak? So, main kena hantar data itu. So, what kind of data yang dia nak? So, of course lah, parameter list ni adalah integer 6 1, integer 6 2, integer 6 3. Okay, ni maksudnya parameter. Argument. Okay, value that that this function need to solve the problem. You need to remember back, this function hanya untuk selesaikan masalah maximum number. Dia tak minta nombor tu. So, ke, yang minta-minta nombor ni, yang minta-minta value daripada user ni adalah kerja main. Okay, main yang minta, lepas tu main hantar. Sebelum ni, main minta, main lah buat kerja semua, betul tak? So, sekarang main minta and dia hantar je. Macam bos, apa data yang dia perlukan pekerja, ah, dia bagi macam tu. Macam tu lah, itulah kerja function. Okay, after you write the header, function header. So, next you need to open the curly braces. Okay, you need to open the curly braces because we want to put the all executed statement, all the written statement that we, that we need to solve the problem. Okay, so all of this we call it as the function body. So, remember... If the question asks you to write the function definition under category of the value returning function, you need to have the return statement. Okay, so return type is also called the data type of function type. Function definition, all function definition have the following part. First, return type. The return type is the data type of the value that is sent from the function. Okay, macam mana kita nak tahu what kind of data type that we need to declare inside our function definition. So, remember, return type ni is based on the based on the value that you want to return to the main. Okay, contohnya macam ni lah. Okay, ni. Return statement ni. Kalau you declare kat sini, contohnya dia nak maximum 6. You declare it as the integer max. Okay, for example. So, you need to return max into the main function. So, you write like this. Return max. Apa maksud return type is, of, is also called the data type of function type? Maksudnya sekarang, return type of this function definition bergantung kepada return ni. Return statement ni. Kalau you tengok, dia return max kan? So, max ni awak declare dia sebagai data type apa? So, as you can see in here, I declare it as the integer. So, automatically this function is data type integer. Itu masuk return type. Return type based on the data type type of the value that you want to return it back to the integer main. Tengoklah kalau char kat sini, char lah sini. Kalau you return grade, jenis je char, ni pun char. Ingat, ini return type ni berdasarkan data type of the return statement. Function name, descriptive name of the function. Function name follow same rule as a variable. As I mentioned before, parameter list a list of variable containing value being passed to the function from where 
parameter list uh, comes from integer main. Okay, remember. The parameter list is come from the integer main. Next, we have the function body, a set of statements that perform the function task enclosed in a set of the prices. Please remember, if you write the function definition, you need to put the open curly braces and close it with the curly braces also. So, we want to make sure all the tasks we put inside the body of that function. Okay, next. So, next is show how to write our function definition, the syntax. Okay. First, okay, this is the example one. First, you need to write the written data type. Next, followed by the function names and follow it next, which will follow with the parameter list. Okay, remember, the header function definition don't have any semicolon. The function that have the, the element function that have the semicolon is only the function prototype. So, that is different between the function definition and also the function prototype. So, for example, I want to solve the problem to find the sum sum of two number how did we know we want to solve the problem about the find sum to number because we can see in this parameter list as you can see the parameter list is come from the main which is uh, this function receive integer a integer b oh you can uh, change in name as the num1 or num2 okay num1 or num2 for example Okay, if you don't know what is the data type you need to put in here in header of the function definition, you can left it first. Okay, you tak payah tulis dulu. Kalau you blur, tak tahu apa data type yang function ni guna, you tinggalkan dahulu. Okay, ni cara macam mana nak menjawab ataupun macam mana nak create function definition. Okay, kita tahu soalan suruh cari uh, we know that question asks you to find the summation of two number. Okay, you need you need to solve that problem using this function. So you name it as the find sum, and you need to receive something from the main. So you need to put the parameter list, which is you need to receive num one and num two or a or b. Okay, how do you know what kind of data type you need to declare here? It based on the function main. In the function main. If you declare num1 as the integer, num2 as the integer, so in here also in the parameter list also must follow that data type. You can ikut data type tu based on apa yang you declare dekat main. Uh, kita nak cari sum. Okay, and the question asks you to return sum into the main. So first, we need to declare, declare first the return value. So in here, I declare it first and then I do the process. Kalau you tak nak buat macam ni, you boleh guna macam ni. First, you declare it first as the integer sum. You declare it first. Sebab sum ni yang kita nak return to the main. Next, you do the process. Sum equal A plus B. Okay, if you declare in here num1 or num2, this also you need to write it as the num1, num2. Okay, ada orang tanya, Miss, A dengan B ni kenapa saya tak nampak pun Miss declare dekat sini? Kalau Miss tak declare, macam mana dia nak tahu A dengan B tu integer Miss? Please look in here. Okay, dekat parameter ni ni lah saya declare value A and B. So, you no need to declare it back inside the body of function. Saya dah declare kat sini A dengan B. Okay, dalam parameter list ni juga dikenali sebagai declaration of the parameter. So, kalau saya dah declare dekat sini, tak perlu saya declare dekat dalam body. Okay, next. Diorang tanya. You tanya saya. Okay, Miss. A dengan B, Miss tak payah declare kan? Kenapa saya nak kena declare sum? Meh sini saya nak tanya. Ada tak saya declare sum dekat sini? Tak ada. Kalau tak ada, saya kena declare lah, declare dekat dalam body of function. Kalau tak declare, macam mana kita nak tahu what kind of data that we need to store inside the memory sum. That's why I declare it first. Okay, so next question asks you to return the sum. So, I write the return statement. So, I write return sum. After you write the return statement, so you go back in here yang you dah kosongkan tadi. Kalau you tengok, Return type ni berdasarkan apa saya cakap Return type is 
based on the return statement. A return statement value data type. Okay, you must follow this data type to declare the data type of this function. Apa data type yang declare dekat return statement ini? Inilah data type untuk function ini. Sebab itu, in here, okay, kita kenal dia sebagai return data type. Okay, so as you can see in here, you return sum. So, sum ni you declare sebagai apa? You declare sebagai in T je. So, automatically you write in here in T je. So, automatically you know, oh, the data type for this function definition is in T je. How did you know? Again, based on the data type that you written to the mean. Where you can find it? In here. In the written statement. You need check first what data you return to the main. Sum. Next, you check what kind of data type you declare for this variable. Yes. After you got the data type, then you write it in the header of the function definition. Okay guys, so next is the example 2. So as you can see in this example, okay, return data type for this function saya tinggalkan kosong. So, this is how if you not sure what data type you need to declare for this function definition so you can uh, laugh it, okay? Laugh it first. Okay, tapi jangan tinggal untuk selama-lamanya. Okay, okay, as you can see in here, I name this function as the find group. Okay, okay, and I receive double mark competition. If student get the mark competition, for example, 80 to 100, so, I will group it as the group A. For example, for example, okay. So, then I uh, declare char group because I want to return group. Okay, when we talk about the char, char will return the single alphabet, single character only. Okay, I declare char group. So, I do the uh, task, okay, for this function. So, I write if mark competition more than 80 and, and mark competition less than 100. So, I group it as a A. Okay, saya groupkan dia sebagai A. And then, continue lah sampai lah berapa banyak yang you nak. Okay, and then I return group. Okay, guys. As you know, this uh, value written in function will return group to the main. Okay, so based on this written statement, automatically I know what is the data type for this fun function. So, first, how did we uh, how did we do that? First, you see return statement. So, I I want to return group to the main. So, group I declare as the char. So, that's why this function definition, I write the data type as a char. Okay? Itu cara macam mana kita nak bagi data type for the function definition. Okay? So, macam tu lah. Cari kat return statement dulu. Tengok dia return apa, you return apa. Lepas tu you tengok balik, you return dia sebagai, uh, you declare dia sebagai apa. Kalau char, char lah kat sini. Okay, very easy. Okay. Where you put this function definition. Okay, function definition you need to put it after you close your main function body. Okay, you kena letak bawah function main. Lepas you tutup calibrations of function main. Ah, Lepas tu baru you write all the function definition. Initiate. So next is function call. What does it mean about the function call? Calling the function or invoking the function. Okay, that's mean function call is if you want to use that function, we need to call it first. If you don't call it, sampai bila-bila lah function tu takkan buat kerja. Itu maksud dia. So this function call is within the body of the main function or within another user defined function. So function call ni boleh berada dekat main function. Then function call ni juga boleh berada dekat function definition. Use a calling statement to tell the compiler to access the function requested. Ni yang saya cakap ni. Kalau you tak panggil function tu macam mana main ataupun compiler nak tahu 
what kind of function that you need to solve the problem. So to execute a function, it must first be called with the following information. Starting the function name and providing a certain information or parameter. Ha, kat sini lah parameter digunakan. Okay, menggunakan function call ni lah. Function call ni yang akan hantar uh, value dekat function definition. Okay, this is how we write our function call. So uh, first, we need to state the function name followed by the argument list. Example, a value returning function is used in an assignment or in an output statement. Ini adalah cara macam mana function call yang berjenis value returning function. As you know, value returning function will return value to the main. Okay, in main, who will uh, get that value? So in main, we need one variable to cache that value. So, untuk dapatkan value itu, kita kena buat dia macam ni. Kalau dekat function definition tu akan return total ke return sum, dekat function main ni, you kena ada penyambut. Ni kita panggil dia penyambut untuk menyambut value daripada function definition. Lepas you write dia penyambut, you kena declare lah penyambut ni. Okay, dia je total. Okay, you kena letak assignment statement followed by the name of the function that you want to call. Okay, apa function yang you nak call untuk suruh dia cari sum of two number. And then, dekat parameter ni, you kena statekan the value. You kena hantar value juga kat dia. Ataupun, ini value yang diberi oleh programmer. Kalau value tu dapat daripada user, contohnya saya ni contoh eh, si in num1 ok si in num2 ni saya declare ni ok now saya nak hantar value yang dekat num1 dengan num2 ni dekat function definition so apa yang saya kena tulis adalah dekat parameter ni parameter function call saya kena letak num1 comma num2 ok ini cara macam mana kita nak panggil function. Tapi sebabkan dia berjenis value returning function you kena ada penyambut di hadapannya. Okay. Ni. So bila dah dapat nilai yang disambut itu dia akan display nilai. Ataupun awak boleh buat cara macam ni pun tak ada masalah di mana you display and you panggil function itu. Tapi saya tak galakkan awak guna cara ini. Saya lebih prefer awak guna cara ini. Okay. Sila guna cara ini. Declare first the variable that will cache the value from the function definition. Next, later you will display the value. Okay, this is the example of value returning function. The full value returning function that consists of the three elements of the function which is function prototype, function call and function definition. Kalau soalan function ini, saya suggestkan selalu kepada student saya Sila buat function definition dahulu. Kosongkan dahulu function prototype and kosongkan dahulu integer main. So the position of each element function ni position je. Function prototype you should put it before integer main. So function call you need to put it inside the integer main. For the function definition you need to put it after you close the integer main. Kalau first time kosongkan dahulu sebab maybe you not sure. Selalunya soalan akan suruh awak buat function dahulu. Tinggalkan satu muka surat kosong untuk awak letak integer main dan juga function prototype semua ni. Dekat muka surat lain, you buat dulu function yang soalan suruh. Okay, contohnya macam ni. Soalan suruh create one function that function will find the summation of two number and return the summation to the main. Itu dia punya question. Okay, you pun write the function definition. So find sum sebabkan dia nak cari two number so automatically you know you need to uh, two number from you, uh, from main. So you declare it as the integer A, integer B. So you open the calibrators and then you write the process. You write integer sum equal A plus B, return sum and then you declare this function as the integer based on the return statement. Pas you dah buat function definition barulah you buat function prototype. So remember apa yang you write dekat kepala function itu yang awak salin balik dekat function prototype. Okay. So you copy with the same name, 
same data type send the number of parameter with the data type so as you can see i write okay integer integer find some find some sama eh okay s kecil eh, s besar s besar sama lepas tu dia ada dua parameter tapi remember for the function prototype it just consists of the data type only so you just write the integer comma integer and you need to end with the semi colon means kalau ada 10 function so declare the 10 yes so you declare dulu 10 macam tu next you open the integer main and then as usual lah you open the curly braces for the body of the main next you know that this function receive two value from the main so where you get two value so main kena minta dekat user when we talk about the value comes from the user you need to do the input statement before you want to write the input statement you need to declare the variable first so that's why i declare integer num162 total so next i ask the user to enter two integer numbers so i do the input statement after i do the input statement i want to send this two value to the function ingat kalau kita nak hantar value ini kita memerlukan function call function call tugas dia adalah memanggil function dan menghantar value so caranya adalah you kena tengok dahulu function definition tu jenis apa kalau function definition tu jenisnya value returning function so remember you kena letak penyambut di hadapan penyambut saya adalah total macam mana saya tahu total macam mana saya nak tahu itu total me so you kena tengok balik dekat function definition you return apa sum kan so nak terima dia adalah total jugalah dan data type dapat integer so you dah kena declare dia sebagai integer ada student saya tanya miss kalau saya nak declare nama sama boleh tak miss saya tak nak lah nama banyak-banyak Boleh, tak ada masalah. Contoh eh, contoh kalau you nak namakan dia ni sebagai sum. Tak ada masalah. Kenapa tak ada masalah guys? Sebab once dia dah tutup body ni, dia tak kenal pun sum ni. Sebab itulah sum ni kita kena declare dekat function definition. Ada student saya tanya, Miss, saya kan dah declare sum kat sini kalau guna nama sama Miss. Tak perlulah saya declare sum ni dekat variable uh, dekat function definition itu salah is wrong if you use the same name and you uh, have declare it inside the integer main itu tak bermaksud you tak perlu declare dia dekat function definition sebab once you dah tutup body of function yang ini adalah block body yang lain dia tak kenal dah apa yang berada dalam ni hanya untuk main saja apa yang berada dalam ni hanya untuk find sum saja itu maksud dia so contohnya saya nak guna sum boleh tak ada masalah Okay, so sum penyambut dia gunakan assignment statement ini adalah function call. Okay, function call ni saya nak ingatkan beberapa tips kat sini. You kena nama, you hanya panggil nama variable saja without eh, jangan letak data type kat sini tak ada data type. Panggil nama saja. Okay, buka bracket. Dalam bracket ni parameter kan. You nak hantar apa? You nak hantar dua bag value. So tak perlu letak integer num1, integer num2 tak perlu. Kenapa? Sebab saya dah declare dia dekat ah, atas. Function call hanya letak nama sahaja, nama variable sahaja. Okay so see total. So ini saya tukar nama sebagai sub. So ada orang tanya, miss boleh tak dekat parameter uh, function definition ni saya nak guna nama yang sama dengan main. Contohlah eh Saya nak tukar A ni dengan 6 white. B ni dengan 6 tu. Boleh ke miss? Boleh. Tak ada masalah. Okey tak ada masalah guna nama yang sama. Macam yang saya cakap tadi lah. Diorang berada di 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 uh, di department yang lain. Yang ni berada di department yang lain. So tak ada masalah. Maksudnya bentinya lain. Ah macam tu. Now saya nak tunjukkan cara macam mana compiler execute each statement in this program. Okay, first. Okay, first of course compiler akan see the directory. Okay, directory first. So, hashtag into IO stream. Okay, using SPSTD. Don't forget it. And then compiler nampak function declaration. So, compiler knows that, oh, this function is under category of the value returning function. In main, we'll receive something from the this function. So this function consists of two parameter. That's mean this function receives two value from the uh, main. So this is how the compiler execute this statement. Next compiler will go to the integer main. 
and will go inside the body of integer main. Compiler see this statement. Okay, integer num1, num2 total. So this is variable declaration. When we talk about the variable declaration, so compiler need to create one memory for each variable. Okay, we have a num1, num2, num3. Next, compiler will execute this statement. Okay, it will ask the user enter two integer number. So, for example, user put the number one is three, number two is four. Compiler will store this value into this memory. Three and four. Eh, ni number ni total eh. Total. Okay, three and four. So, next, compiler go to the next statement. So, in here, here, compiler see this statement total. So, compiler find the function call here. Okay, compiler nampak function call statement kat sini. So, apa yang compiler akan buat? Compiler akan cari find sum dan dia akan bawa dua value ini bersama dengannya. Apa value dia? So, compiler akan cari balik memory 6162. Oh, the value is 3 and 4. So, compiler akan bawa 3 dengan 4. Compiler akan sediakan satu bakul Ni contoh ni bakul <laughs> Ok ni bakul Dalam bakul ni Dia bawa alamat Nama alamat dia find sum Dan dia bawa value 3 dan 4 Dalam bakul ni Ok kita anggap uh, Compiler tu orang lah Dia pegang bakul tu Apa compiler buat Compiler akan cari Kat mana find sum ini berada So compiler pun berjalan-jalan Berjalan-jalan Bersama bakul dia eh Bersama bakul dia Dan bersama nilai dia Nilai dalam bakul tu Okay alamat bersama nilai Means that Bersama sampul ke apa Dia pun bawa berjalan-jalan Dia cari-cari Cari-cari Oh Kat sini rupanya function ini Before dia masuk ke dalam function ini Dia kena check first Whether nama dia sama tak Okay dia pun tengok Macam postman hantar barang Kan sekarang mesti Shopee right 7766 Shopee Okay shopping uh, Before dia nak hantar barang dia akan tengok alamat tu kat mana So dia bawa lah barang tu dengan alamat tu sekali So sampai dekat rumah dia kena make sure kan Alamat tu sama tak dengan alamat dekat barang tu Sama juga dengan ni Dia akan make sure sama tak So dia pun check find some find some Okay sama So dia pun ketuk pintu find some ni Hello Are you there? So find some ni pun keluar Okay Ya apa? Okey, saya nak bagi dua value dekat awak. Value ni main yang bagi. Kita nak bagi dua value. Find sum ni macam tuan rumah ni. Dia pun tanya value apa? So 3 dengan 4. Before dia nak 3 dengan 4 tu dia akan check first whether what kind of data tu. Data tu sama tak? Sebab tu dia letak dekat sini integer integer. Dia nak compromise kan and uh, compromise kan and make sure kan data yang dibawa oleh compiler tu data type ni sama. Okey, bila dia check, okey betul. So kat sini kat sini so owner ni akan create satu memory untuk terima value daripada main. Sebab tu kalau kita nampak integer A, integer B ini sebenarnya variable declaration. So dekat find sum ni, ni rumah find sum eh. Oh, warna hijau. Okey. Okay. Dekat rumah ni Nama alamat rumah ni Find sum Dekat find sum ni Dia akan create satu lagi variable Yang diberi nama sebagai A O B Ataupun kalau awak guna dia sebagai 6 1 6 2 So you boleh namakan dia sebagai 6 1 6 Ni yang saya cakap Lain rumah Lain nama dia ha, Tu maksud dia Walaupun nama sama Dia berada di body yang Berlainan Sebelum tu dia dah declare variable kan So dia pun terima Melah value yang diberi oleh main tu Okay dia pun terima 3 dengan 4 Make sure susunan dia sama Okay susunan parameter ni kena sa sama So dia pun bawa masuk value ni ke dalam rumah dia Okay, dia pun masuk dalam body ni Body of this function Dekat dalam body ni Dia nampak integer sum Integer sum dia akan create satu lagi memory Memory ni namanya sum So dia pun buat proses 
Okay, contohnya saya namakan dia sebagai 6162. Dia akan buat 3 tambah 4, 7. So, dapat 7. So, 7 ni akan dia assign masuk dekat dalam mana? Sum. So, dia pun simpan 7. Nampak tak? Proses dia sekarang. Ni owner dekat find sum punya kerja eh. Compiler dekat find sum. So, next. Dia nampak return sum. So, return sum ni tadi, value dia berapa 7? So, dia pun bagi balik dekat yang warna biru ni. Dia bagi balik, dia pass balik sum ni. Dia akan pass balik sum ni dekat compiler yang warna biru ni. Okay, dia cakap dengan compiler biru ni. Nah, saya dah buat kerja saya. Ini nilai dia. Nilai dia 7. So, sekarang saya tukar color biru pula. Okay, sekarang kerja compiler biru ni pula. Compiler biru ni akan bawa tujuh ni dekat mana? Dia akan bawa tujuh ni balik dekat main. Okay. So, tujuh ni akan ni. Nilai ni akan pegang nilai tu tujuh. Boleh faham tak? Lepas compiler hijau ni pulangkan nilai yang dia dah cari. Dia pulangkan tujuh. So, compiler biru ni pun bawa lah benda ni ke main. Dan dia letak dekat dalam ni ha Tujuh Okay nilai function, function call ni adalah akan bawa nilai tujuh So tujuh ni kita nak simpan dalam mana Sebab tu lah guys kita kena ada penyambut Penyambut dia saya declare sebagai total So sekarang tujuh Seven will be assigned into total So 7 in here. Okay, ni dekat rumah main. Ni rumah main. Okay, ni rumah integer main. Okay, fahamkan konsep ni. So, next main akan so, next dia pergi ke next statement, see out total totals. So, dia keluarkanlah output total is 7. Ni cara dia. Okay, nampak macam umit je miss. Sebenarnya senang macam ni. Okay, very easy. Boleh nampak tak macam mana compiler proses dia? Itu saya buat cerita lah. Okay, dia macam postman juga. Okay, so next is parameter. So, parameter kat mana tadi dia letak? Dia letak dekat dalam mana? Kita akan jumpa parameter yang uh, dekat function definition dan juga function call. Okay, apa maksud parameter ni? Okay, as you can see in here, there are two types of parameter. We have the formal parameter. Okay, formal parameter maksudnya a variable declared in the function heading. Okay, kalau you nampak parameter list in here in function definition. So, this one we call it as the formal parameter. Why we call it as the formal parameter? Maksudnya sekarang, dia terima je apa-apa value daripada main, formal parameter. So, remember, formal parameter is the variable declared in the function heading. Okay, dekat function definition. So, another types of parameter, we have the actual parameter. So, actual parameter is a variable or expression listed in the call to a function. That means this one, variable in the function call, we call it as the actual parameter. Okay, why we call it as the actual parameter? Because of that parameter or that value comes from the user. Okay, that's the actual value from the user. That's why the parameter in the function call, we call it as the actual parameter. Okay, guys, to be continued. Okay, so next week, I would like to uh, introduce you a next category of the function, which is the void function. Okay, so if you have any question, you can ask me in Telegram. And don't forget to click uh, your attendance in view future. Okay, so that's all for today's classes. And don't forget to do tutorial that I have been given you in DCR. So that's all. Assalamualaikum.